Senator Milne. Uh, thank you, Mr Acting uh, Deputy President. Well, I want to start by saying that it's really disingenuous and dishonest for the Labor Party to make a speech, an entire speech, on why we should keep this program, how good this program has been, why energy efficiency is so important, and then at the end say, however, we will, we will not hinder the government in repealing it. This is why so many people are disengaged and fed up with politics, because people tell them one thing in the public and then do an entirely different thing behind closed doors. Now, I've just checked on what happened in the House of Representatives because I was rather confused here because I heard a whole speech saying why this should not be repealed. And of course, that is my view, that it should not be repealed, and I'll get to that in a minute. And I find that in the House of Reps, Labor didn't call a division and let it go through and hope that it would just drift through in the Senate so that they could go out to their community, put out this speech everywhere saying how great the Energy Efficiency Opportunities Act has been and how Labor's totally supporting it, whilst voting with the government to repeal it. It's just disgraceful behaviour, and it's no wonder young people are so disengaged because they say to me, look, we're told one thing, we vote, we change government, and then they just say something different. No one does what they say, believe or whatever. Senator Singh obviously believes the Energy Efficiency Opportunities Act should stay, but in the party clearly they don't, and so it's this case of go out there and make a big scene and say you support something. Uh, kick, in other words, Kick the government as hard as you can and then quietly let them do as they like. Well, it's disgraceful. I can tell you, Mr Acting Deputy President, the Greens won't be doing that. I am wholeheartedly supportive of the Energy Efficiency Opportunities Act, and it is disgraceful that the government's getting rid of it. I spoke on this when uh, it came through in February 2006, and I note at the time that Senator O'Brien, the Labor senator, indicated the bill didn't go far enough. And now we've got the uh, Labor Party having the success proven of the bill backing the government and getting rid of it. We are in a ridiculous position in this country. We're a laughing stock around the world. It is a no-brainer to go not to go after energy efficiency opportunities. How can a government that goes on about the costs of energy then say you're going to take away an only bit of legislation? It's pretty weak, actually, but nevertheless, it's, it's achieved some results. Why would you want to say to people we're going to take away the ability for you to reduce the amount of energy you use on the basis that it's too costly for industry to report on how they could actually save energy? And this is where I just want to say how disgraceful the business leadership in Australia is at the moment. What a bunch of climate-denying cowards they are, whether it's the Business Council of Australia or Aki or the whole lot of them. They're getting out there and now they're saying to their own members that they don't care. It's a case of use more energy. And why do they want people to use more energy, use more power? Don't worry about the climate, just get those coal-fired generators cranking. Let's use more power. That's what Dick Warburton wants in his RET review. Use more power. And what does he say? When electricity demand recovers, electricity demand must recover. In other words, use more power in an age where everyone else in the world is saying business needs to be super efficient and the best way of getting your costs down is to have energy efficiency. Make your, your production process so energy efficient you bring down your costs. But not in Australia. No, no, no. Rev them up. Rev up your costs. doesn't matter how inefficient, how much power you use. Let's just rev up the cost, but let's make sure the power you use is coal-fired power. That's the one we want, not renewable energy, but coal-fired power. Let's get that coal mines revving. Let's get those coal-fired generators revved up. Let's get Australian industry to go backwards and become such a rust bucket that it is so uncompetitive with industries in the rest of the world. You know, the energy efficiency, whether it's commercial, residential, industrial, is important. The Europeans have now perfected prefabricated wooden housing with triple glazed windows that are producing neutral, energy neutral housing, and within 10 years they hope to have energy positive housing. That is, you can put up a house that will actually generate energy into the grid, a net energy benefit. That is an extraordinary thing, but in Australia, no. 
Would we want a national energy efficiency target? No. Why would we want that? We've got plenty of coal. We don't care about the climate. We don't care about whether industry is actually efficient in this country and operates efficiently. It is an absolute disgrace. So let me just go through uh, where we are. When this bill came through, I said it's not enough to have this scheme as voluntary. To be identify for a company where you can save money on energy efficiency, but then to the board to say, but actually we've got other priorities, we want to spend our capital on this or that, we're not going to actually do this. And so at the time I said we should make it mandatory, not only mandatory to report on where your energy efficiency opportunities are, but mandatory to implement them on a sliding scale. And at the time, uh, I said that what we wanted to do was make it mandatory to implement them if there was a two-year payback initially. Two years. Now, what a no-brainer is that? Requiring a company to say to implement something which, if over two years, it's a full payback on their whatever the technology was or their improvement was, and thereafter a permanent saving. But I couldn't even get Labor or the government in 2006 to agree to, to mandatory implementation of whatever energy efficiency opportunities had been identified. And now we've gone backwards even further. We're not even going to require them to report on the energy efficiency. So what have we got, Mr Acting Deputy President? We've gotten rid of the carbon price, which is leading to increased emissions from coal. Increased emissions from coal driving greenhouse gases harder. We are now getting rid of the energy efficiency opportunities. What that means is we don't even have an, we don't have an energy efficiency target. We have nothing, and we've got a measly 5 per cent target, which will have to go higher. And the question is, if you're not going to support renewable energy, if you're not going to support energy efficiency, where on earth are you going to get a 5 per cent emission reduction target, let alone the 40 to 60 per cent reduction that will be necessary if we are to keep uh, global warming to under two degrees, which Australia agreed to, but apparently uh, the Abbott government doesn't actually agree to that. And I want to say how disgusted I am also by these um, uh, regulatory assessments that have come out saying that um, the benefit here is the reduced cost of having to do the report rather than look at the cost benefit of the outcome, reduced energy use, reduced greenhouse gas emissions. Now, what's even extraordinary here is the UK has just adopted our scheme, the Australian scheme, to drive transformation in their big emitters. So just as we are dumping it, they are picking it up because they, they realise it has been so successful in Australia and could be even more successful. And why are they doing it? because they've already done a huge amount on energy efficiency at residential level and now they want it for their big emitters. And that's why they've got a, a sincerely good uh, energy and transformational strategy in the UK to bring down greenhouse gas emissions. We took from them their Green Climate Bank with the Clean Energy Finance Corporation. That's where I got the idea from, to put it into our clean energy package. The Clean Energy Finance Corporation came from the UK and they've now picked up our energy efficiency opportunities. But here we are trying to smash everything good. And uh, I just think that we've got this complete lack of professionalism with these assessors who are doing these jobs. We've got the Warburton Report assessment. It's all just based on complete wrong assumptions, uh, telling modellers to take an assumption with the RET review that they don't have to take into account the commercial realities of coal, to suspend commercial reality because we don't want a report that's going to do anything other than encourage coal-fired generation. What a disgrace. Mr Acting Deputy President, you know, where is the rigour in any of this? Where is the science? Where is the technical rigour? And where is the sense? Where is the sense? Because ultimately, you are talking about big industry in Australia, the big energy users. They are going to shut down if they are not competitive. And they will not be competitive if they are allowed to be lax and wasteful when it comes to energy. They are not going to be able to bring down their costs and compete with the Germans, for example, anyone in Europe, for example, who will be sticking with very strict energy efficiency rules. And that is exactly uh, what we should be doing. Uh, not only um, do we think that 
We need to keep the Energy Efficiency Opportunities Act, but I say again, it needs to be made mandatory in terms of payback periods. And all I can assume is the reason for doing this uh, is to allow for more corporate welfare uh, for, from the government under direct action. So get rid of the Energy Efficiency Act, get rid of any reporting, and keep, keep a complete lack of transparency, keep a fog, and then get these big coal-fired generators to come along to the government and say, give me some money to put in some energy efficiency equipment and I'll do it. That's what it is. It's about taking away any regulatory arrangements so that taxpayers' money can be given to the corporates under direct action. It is a precursor to where we are going with the direct action that the government has. And it won't be additional. That's the point. Get rid of the Energy Efficiency Act, get rid of any regulatory requirement to report, and then you fudge the figures on what is additional effort, because under direct action it has to be Kyoto compliant. To be com Kyoto compliant it will have to be additional, but now we're just getting rid of all the regulation. Look, the rest of the world is going to look at us and just say we're cheats, absolute cheats, and they're going to start auditing how Australia is calculating what it's doing on climate change because the, the dodgy deals are just going on and, and all this legislative effort is designed to facilitate dodgy deals that will be done in, that, in the name of energy efficiency uh, and uh, direct action. And you can only think that the only intention here to repeal the Act is because it uh, places um, the small compliance on huge businesses, but because the government is committed to arrest the rapid decline in energy demand that's occurred since 2009 and 10 in order to prop up its associates in the failing fossil fuel generation sector. And that's what I said at the start, Mr Acting Deputy President. This is all about use more energy, use more coal, get the coal-fired generators cranked up, make Australian business less efficient put people out of business ultimately, and then when they're going out of business because they're so inefficient in a rust bucket economy, they'll have their hand out to the government, to Mr Palmer's new inquiry about, about assistance, manufacturing assistance, because you have facilitated them in being less efficient and competitive than they should be. Well, what a disgrace. That is not a clever, innovative country. That is not a country moving to actually decouple economic growth from environmental degradation and pollution and fossil fuel generation. It is a country which is saying that we want to lock together economic growth and coal-fired power, which is a disaster in this century and a recipe for backwardness. This is very, very bad legislation, and I end by also saying to the Labor Party, don't go out and try and con the community saying one thing and doing another. You are facilitating the end of the Energy Efficiency Opportunities Act because, no doubt, the coal-fired generators, the, the gas-fired generators out there want this legislation gone. The big polluters want it gone and Labor is facilitating them doing it while making speeches saying how bad it is and it's so dishonest. The Greens will not be supporting this legislation. We remain committed to a national energy efficiency target and I remain committed to bringing back this legislation but making it mandatory to report and a mandatory schedule for implementation of the recommendations those reports make in terms of what is energy efficient for big emitters in Australia, big users of energy.